last week we were a little further inland. We were taking a look around the areas of Lismore and mm -hmm. Casino. But now we've come closer to the coast to Mwilumbai. And honestly, everything that we're going to check out is in this region. Oh, it certainly is. Now, we call it a road trip. But I reckon the people in the cars here, they've got the right idea. They're heading off somewhere interesting. I need to do the same because we are going to Mavis's yeah. Kitchen. But on the way, I do need to get some ingredients. So I need to hit the road too. Hey, that's OK, because there is somewhere that I am desperate to stop in at. Really? Is that the place where you give me the car keys? <laughs> yes, that might help. Just one small detail. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> what a great looking shop, eh? As you travel up and down the coast in this part of the world, there's so many fantastic little roadside food stalls where you can get your ingredients. Uh, some of them are tiny, but some of them like this are luxury. It's absolutely amazing. Now, I'm actually after some more old-fashioned vegetables. It's pretty simple, you know, carrots and broccoli, a little bit of beetroot. It's all good stuff. It's all about what you do with it, after all. And these are organic. It's the tropical and Asian flavours that I love best about cooking up in this part of the world. I mean, look at this selection. It's beautiful. We're at a place called Buck's Farm, just inland from Willembar. This here is a kaffir lime, one of my favourites. We're definitely going to use some of that. But also kaffir lime leaves. Have you, uh, you guys got any leaves? Yes. How many would you like? Uh, not that many. Uh, just a handful. You cannot come to Marulambai without dropping in to the Margaret Ollie Art Centre, part of the Tweed Regional Gallery. It celebrates her life and her career, both of which were unbelievable. But not only that, it doesn't matter what time of the year you come here, it is always full of the most extraordinary exhibitions. How incredible is this? It's an absolute replica and rebuild of Margaret Ollie's home from Paddington in Sydney. They actually took everything out, catalogued it, and then put it back exactly in place. I mean, she actually stayed painting in a home till she died in 2011, aged 88. <laughs> Horticulture is this amazing property. How, tell us how big it is and how much of the, is the kitchen garden? Oh, we're on 25 acres yep. and uh, all you can see here is part of our kitchen garden, but we do have fr produce and other fruit trees scattered throughout the property. Fantastic. And I imagine you're spending almost every hour out here because oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking around there so much. Do. Okay, I'm looking at all your fruit trees and they are literally just almost bending to the ground <laughs> with so much fruit laden on that. And it's all over the property. I mean, what's your secret to that? Uh, good pruning techniques, yep. uh, lots of mulching, regular pruning and, and feeding, you know, all organic um, food and uh, foliar feeds. Yeah, those kind of things, yes. You'll talk about having a kitchen garden. What proportion can you get? Well, everything you see in this garden gets utilised in the restaurant, but obviously, you know, it, it sometimes demands our strips, our supply. Sure. But we've got lovely partnerships with local growers in the right. area, and, um, and between the three of us, we're able to pr provide Mavis's with everything they require, which is lovely. Sustainability is the key driving you know, force behind Mavis's kitchen, isn't it? It's That's not exactly just in right. the gardening, it's everything, isn't it? It gives us a bit of a rundown. Well, we try and be sustainable as possible yeah. from um, our waste that's coming out of the, the restaurant. A lot of it, it goes back into the garden in the form of, of composting and trench composting. And uh, we also have chickens and ducks, so they, you know, provide us with some manure, which then goes back into the compost and out into the garden to provide fertiliser. So, Love it. you know, we try and close the system as much as possible. It's still keeping it beautifully local and you're still getting a real flavour of the place. I love it. It's brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so the old 
ultimate chicken dish. I mean, I'm interested to know because it's not the most amazing chicken. Well, listen, it's the ultimate citrus chicken. So... Oh, right. <laughs> so it's not the most incredible citrus oh, chicken? Oh, right. Look, I may have oversold this just a little bit. I did get excited <laughs> because there's so many great citrus flavours up in this part of the world. But also, don't you think it's like, like one of the quintessential dishes that we all grew up with? Like, Absolutely. We used to have lemon chicken all the time at my Nana's house. Did you really? Was yeah. it good? It was amazing. I reckon this might just possibly... Give it a run for its money. All right. Now, I need you to start off by making us like a, a little bit of a stuffing, a butter stuffing. Okay. So this is really easy. Two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Yep. And we're going to mix that with two things. Now, first up, it's a little bit of dried lemon myrtle. I love lemon myrtle. Easy to find around the place. Plus, we're going to use a little bit of the zest of these. Now, have you seen these before? Uh, no. I, I was going to say, are they just really bad-looking lemons? No. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Well, they're organic. Uh, it's, uh, they're yuzu, so it's a Japanese yuzu. citrus, a bit like a mandarin, so we need the zest of that as well and mix it together. Meanwhile, i better prep the chicken. Quick question for you in relation to yuzus. Yes. What if you haven't got a yuzu tree? That's a perfectly good question, huh? Um, it is just another citrus, so you can feel free using lemons or mandarins or oranges. It's all about getting those citrus flavours in there together. OK, beautiful. Um, how much is one of these? About two teaspoons. So while you're doing that, I'm just going to make a little gap here Under between the skin. the skin and the meat. Yeah, you've yeah. done this before many times, I'm yeah, sure, and you stuff it. it in there. So once you've stirred it together, I'm going to get you to fill it through. Meanwhile, I am going to have a look at our fire. See what you did there? You left me with a messy job. The great coals there. Ugh. How'd you go with that butter? Oh, you got it's a bit messy, in there. Mate. Well, that's what happens in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, we're going to need to roast it in our camp oven. Here, you can have a cloth and everything. I'm so I actually tired. might just go wash my hands while you do this. No worries. Look, it's really easy. All we're going to do is grab some onions I've chopped up and put those in the base here. And the reason for that is normally you'd use like a metal trivet. But because we've got some onions hanging around, they're going to add extra flavour while it goes. But really, you could use any veggies you've got left over in the crisper. And then. That's going to make our little base. It's full of flavour. So instead of a regular trivet, just a bit of veggies. Yeah, you know? but also you, you've already mentioned you're going to sacrifice those, aren't you? Oh, yes. By the way, these are sacrificial onions. <laughs> they They're going to burn. <laughs> yeah. Now, we actually, when I mentioned that we were on a road trip, somebody instantly on social media was like, oh, but what if we haven't got an open fire and we can't do it in the cold? You can adapt any of the recipes that you cook out on location like this. Absolutely. You can make an open fire in your kitchen. It's really easy. <laughs> no, use your oven. <laughs> use your oven. A little bit of oil, salt and pepper, and then there's a little trick to making this cook perfectly. If you haven't actually cooked on an open flame before or a camp oven, what you can do is put it on the coals and then make sure you put the coals on the top. So effectively, you're creating an oven out in the wild. Exactly right. You need that all round heat and make sure you've got something safe to work it with. Yes. It's called Ned. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can smell the chicken. Oh, that is amazing. It's been about an hour, and it should be like two-thirds cooked, but it might be a little ahead of that. We do need to make a little bit of a base for it. So right. those yuzu that you yeah. did earlier on, I'll get you to halve those, and we'll squeeze that into a bowl along with some kaffir lime leaf. And then something which you may not have used before. It's another part of the kaffir lime tree. It's the kaffir lime fruit. When you're doing your kaffir limes, get rid of the white bit. All right, so you end up with the green bit. Here, I'll give you a tiny bit to try. OK. Tell oh, wow, it is a little tinny. Yeah, tell me if you like that. Strangely, I actually do. Oh, yeah, the bitter bit's coming now. <laughs> oh, don't, I take that back. So the you, first I... bit is delicious. <laughs> you only need a really, really little bit. It's got an incredible aroma. The smell, beautiful. The taste, yeah. Oh. Throw some of that in, along with some extra virgin olive oil. And then we're going to go have a look at our chook. Oh, right. that smells good. That's yeah, nice, isn't it? All right, so let's have a look at how our chook's doing. Oh, yeah, she's brown. She's pretty golden. I reckon it's only going to be about an hour and 15. So throw the baste over the top, pop the lid back on, and we need to make one really quick salad, OK? 
So I was wondering when you were going to use all of your veggies and little things you picked from the garden? Yeah, no, it's a pretty good idea I've got here. It's a simple salad. What I'm going to get you to do is take some broccoli and our carrots, and you're going to grate those. Right. Meanwhile, I'm going to grab some parsley, which we picked, and chop that nice and finely. Some say I was born to run As sure as the setting sun like We'll just combine it with some aioli. And some almonds. Ed, this salad looks absolutely scrumptious. That's yeah, pretty good. I always knew you were pretty good at stirring, too. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am going to have a look at our chook because I can smell it from over there. Oh, wow. seriously? That is amazing. Now, like I said earlier on, these onions were absolutely set to be sacrificed, but we'll let it rest for just a couple of minutes. I reckon this and our salad will be absolutely perfect. Maybe just a a little extra kaffir lime, just for Joe. Oh, that looks incredible. I've got to be a little bit careful getting it out, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Oh <laughs> wow, look at that! Do I get to I get to have this little bit in the bottom though? I think that's probably got my name all over. I better say, you know, it is fantastic when the meat is literally falling off the bones. Wow. Yeah. A little bit extra there, so I should probably taste that. You probably oh, earned it. Oh wow. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. yum! This salad, one of the things I love most about it, it's not just the, the flavour and the, the textures and the fact that it's healthy, it's the colours. It's such a happy place up here, this part of, of Australia. Yeah. And I absolutely love coming here. And to me, that's, uh, that's kind of it on a plate. I have to say, you have captured it perfectly and you have made the ultimate citrus chicken. I haven't oversold it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and my new favourite salad, just quietly, that's divine. I want to know.